Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Andrew, also known as Ginger Hacker, and I'm so excited to have you guys here for day 13 of Try Hack Me's Advent of Cyber. We're gonna be going over some amazing room stuff today inside the room, learning about Yara, and following our story to see what's going on with Miss Mick Skitty, what happened to the blue team and how they can help find her, and hopefully we can get through the rest of this story and help save Sockmas. So let's jump into the room and see where the story has left off. So with our story, when McSkitty went missing, there was chaos and uncertainty at the best festival company, TBFC. However, even in her disappearance, McSkitty was trying to help the TBFC blue team. Taking a page out of the crisis communication process, McSkitty sent what looks like a bunch of images to the blue team from an anonymous location. These images looked like they were related to the Easter preparations, but they contained a message sent by McSkitty. The crisis communication process outlines that a message might be sent through a folder of images containing hidden messages that can be decoded if you know the key word. A blue team, the blue team has created a YAR rule that runs on the directory containing the images. The YAR rule must trigger on a keyword followed by a code word. After extracting all code words in ascending order, the blue team will be able to decode the message. Now, to go over our learning objectives for today, we have understanding the basic concepts of Yara, learn what and why we need to use Yara rules, explain the different types of Yara rules, learn how to write Yara rules, and practically detect malicious indicators using Yara. Now, the way we'll be doing this today is we'll be inside of our virtual machines. We do not need the attack box today. We will have a split screen availability. We'll not be using a direct link availability, and we do not need any credentials to get into a VM via RDP, VNC, or SSH. Now, I have already started our attack machine, which is right here in our second uh, window, which we'll be pivoting to in a little bit once we get started. Now, also, to keep this in mind, inside our attached VM, McSkitty has sent all the images and downloads to the download Easter uh, folder. So let's keep that in mind and let's go ahead and hit our checkbox that we've got our target machine open and let's dive into our Yara rules. Now, at this stage, McSkitty and the lead defender has entrusted you with the mission of evolving the use of Yara rules. Now, before jumping into the action, let's take a closer look at what Yara is and how it works and why it's such a valuable tool in the TBFC's fight to protect Sockmas. Now, Yara is a powerful tool defenders can use to detect malware based on patterns, behaviors, and unique indicators rather than relying on file names or signatures. It helps undercover threats that hide in plain sight by allowing an analyst to write their own detection rules or use community shared ones. This makes it especially valuable during post-incident investigations, threat hunting, memory analysis, and intelligence-driven scans across systems. Now, its true strength comes from the speed, flexibility, and during post-incident investigations, the amount of strings it can complete in binary patterns and give defenders the ability to find exactly what they're they are considered suspicious. With rule sharing, customization, and detailed visibility into malicious activity, YAR rules enable team to move fast, passive, monitoring to protect threat hunting, strengthening security before attacks can spread. Now, we're gonna quickly go over a few of the different types of YAR rules and as well as some of the things that are kind of key elements that we should be considering when we're going over these today. And the things we'll be looking over are going to be the metadata, strings, and conditions. Now, metadata is exactly that. It's going over who created it, maybe when it was created, and what's its purpose. Now, inside the strings, those are the clues Yara searches for via text, bit sequences, or regular expressions that mark suspicious content. Now, conditions are going to be our logic detects of such as combining multiple strings, such as and ors, maybe specific ASCII or use case for URLs, or a file that we're specifically looking for. And as I mentioned before, so strings is kind of maybe our most, most simplistic basic search, which is a file, a memory, or a piece of that data. Here in this example, we're looking for a specific string called Christmas. Now here, as we go further down, we're going over different types of uh, insensitive string cases where we can do a no case, where we're looking for Christmas spelled, all uppercase, lowercase, maybe with one or two letters capitalized, and we'd still be able to find it. We also have wide 
character strings with white ASCII. What this is doing is um, allowing two bit Unicode characters, adding wide tells Yara to look at this format and enforcing single bit searches, but can both look at that together. We also have XOR strings. Malhair agents often XOR encode text to hide them from scanners. And by using XOR modifiers, Yara automatically checks all possible single bit XOR variations of a string, revealing the attacker tried to conceal. And we also have base64 strings, and this is where Yara decodes the content and searches for the original pattern, even when it's hidden in encoded form. Now, we also have other ways that we can do this via the hexadecimal strings, and this doesn't have to lead to repeatable words behind. Instead, we're looking for raw bits of data inside executable memory. Now, regular expression strings also as well, we can be using regex to also help kind of use these type of patterns for uh, looking for multiple variations of a certain maybe word, number, special character to enhance our search to help kind of find that type of malicious piece that we're looking for. So as we kind of go down, we go more over some of the additional conditions, matching a single string, condition on Xmas, single condition, matching any string, so any of them, matching all strings, and then also the and ors and seeing if we need to see anything benign. So just like building a small defensive strategy, lets you combine multiple checks into checking one single condition. Now, as we get to the tail end of this, we have our Yara case use case. And here in the Ingo kingdom of Malhair, used a Trojan known as Ice ID to steal credentials from systems. Now, McSkitty's analysts discovered that the malicious files spread across Wareville shared a common signature, the same MZ header found in executable malware used by Dark Kingdom. These samples were small, lightweight loaders designed to infiltrate systems and later summon more dangerous payloads. Let's write our Yara rule. So we have this one that they've built out specifically looking for that ICE ID rule. And then our analysts have saved this file named ICE ID starter.yar and it executed on one of the hosts. As a result, we can see one file that was detected. And it looks like we found a malhair gift loader.exe. So next up, is an interesting task where now we get to create our own Yara rule. Now, don't be alarmed if this is your first time looking at Yara and you're like, wait a minute, Andy, where do I even start? I don't even know how to craft a Yara rule. Well, good news for us, Try Hack Me has done a great job with our story and actually providing us a great sample right here in front of us. So stay tuned, we're gonna go a little bit more further and we're gonna get into the attack box and get this Yara, and get this Yara rule written. Let's go. Okay, everybody, as you can see, we've moved into our attack box. So let's go ahead and read our questions for the day and see if we can help the blue team discover what decoded message we need to find from McSkitty. So our questions we're trying to answer today are how many images contain the string TBFC? What regex would we use to find a string that starts with TBFC and has some unknown ASCII characters followed by that? And what was the message sent by McSkitty? Now, as we know, the files that McSkitty sent the blue team are here inside our virtual machine inside the downloads folder under this Easter directory. Now, when we go in here, this looks like just a bunch of photos of Easter bunnies and jelly beans. But somehow McSkitty was able to get a message to her team that we need to help discover. So let's go ahead and get started. So as we mentioned before, well, Andy, I've never written a YAR rule. Where do we even start? Well, no worries. Try Hack Me did an amazing job and the blue team of crafting us a great rule right here that we can quickly kind of alter briefly to make and work to our needs. Now, you can copy this over to a text editor. I went ahead and moved this over to my own notes before this room uh, while working on this room and made some changes that we're going to go into Nano inside the virtual machine. I'm going to post my edits and then we're going to kind of walk through the lines of what we did those changes to, to make this rule fit our own. Now, if you'd like to, you can simply just copy and paste this one specifically and drop it into a text editor inside the virtual machine. So we're going to open up nano control shift V is how we're going to paste that rule. And as you can see, I have the same rule title, which is TBFC simple MZ detect, but some slight tweaks. So as mentioned before and inside the room, your metadata is simply kind of a description of what is happening here. So who is our author of this rule? And that is the TBFC blue teamer, Ginger Hacker, myself. Um, our description of what is this rule going to do? 
So what we're doing with this is when this fires is this is hoping to extract any TBFC message fragments sent by McSkitty. And a simple date, this was made on December 13th. Now, let's go into the strings line and what we did for some changes with the string. Now, for the string, we have our fixed TBFC, which is our fixed marker, which is st the start of our message fragment. Now, after that, we have some uh, bracket with a capital A, TAC, capital Z, lowercase a, TAC, a lowercase z, zero, TAC, nine, with an end bracket. Now, pretty much what this is looking for is any uppercase or lowercase letters and any digits zero through nine. Now, the plus sign at the end of that bracket is simply looking for one or more of those characters. And then the ASCII modifier at the end, this is telling YAR to treat this pattern as an ASCII string only, not wide UTF TAC 16. That's appropriate because these TBF markers are expected to be an appear on normal ASCII text in this data being scanned. Now, for our condition, what this is pretty much saying is, is if and when we scan and run this YAR rule, if any of these things follow or match that rule that we did, we want it to file and provide us that rule name or provide us the file of what it hit on. So with that, and another fun thing, and just so you guys know, when you're actually working with Regex, and I wanna make sure I give this shout out, Regex 101 is an amazing, great site you can actually use to help build that expression. So here's that example of what we put in for the TBFC, A, TAC, Z, A, TAC, Z, zero, TAC, nine, plus our closed brackets and plus, and this is giving that, exa that example I provided. So looking for any lowercase letters with numbers, looking for a mix of uppercase and lowercase with numbers. Here we have ginger hacker rules, what? And we have some numbers and lowercase letters as well. And so this is what we should be looking for when we actually fire and maybe the results we should see. So with this, we can actually go back to our start as well, which if you recall in the room, we also get are given this example during we find it right here on regular expressions and strings right here. So minus a little bit of the equal sign, but I think that might be part of our answer. And let's see if this actually works. So TBFC semicolon, scroll here. So TBFC semicolon bracket, capital A, TAC, capital Z, lowercase a, TAC, lowercase Z, zero, TAC, nine, bracket, plus. All right, there we go. So perfect. So we already have that as our regex entry. Now let's move along and continue to see if we can figure out what strings we can see and how many, and if we can get that message that McSkitty sent. So next steps are we are going to get this rule going and we need to save this in our text editor, which is nano. Yes, we wanna save it. I'm going to name it the TBFC simple MZ detect and press enter. And congrats, you just wrote your first YAR rule. Congratulations, give yourself a round of applause. Now, the next thing we need to do is we actually need to command this and have YAR run this rule. Now, what we plan on doing is we need to simply call to Yara. We're gonna do a TAC R, which is the option to do a recursive search in every subfolder, not just top level. Now we also are gonna to add to that an S, and this is going to show us exactly that text file that is triggering or matching to this rule we are, we are firing, which is from our home directory, from the Ubuntu directory, and then we have our rule. Now, before we do this, we also need to point this to where we want it to scan to. Now, if we simply hit enter right now, it's not, it, there's nowhere it's going. It's saying, hey, run this rule. But it's not, we're not pointing it to any specifically directory we want to run into. So, hit that tab arrow up. And what we want to do is we want to have this scan through our home directory and the Ubuntu directory. Now, fun fact, this will work when we run this, or should work, but another thing we could do is since we know where our files are, we can actually remove the recursive search and just say a show, 
And if we wanted to, we could simply target this to our downloads and the Easter directory and run it directly to that specific directory itself. However, one reason why we'd probably want to do this to the entirety of the subdirectories is we don't want to miss something. So let's throw that tack R back in and fingers crossed, let's see if we can see that secret message and some files that Miss Mick Skitty put and sent to her blue team. And would you look at that? It looks like we have some results. So looks like we have one, two, three, four, five different messages or JPEGs that fired reference this rule. So let's pivot back here. How many images contain the string TBFC? Well, as we can see from that YAR rule we just ran, it looks like we have five. So let's drop that in real quick here. All right, perfect. We are on the right track. Now, it looks like there could be a message here sent from McSkitty. Now, if you recall, she sent them in chronological or numerical order. So I was curious to see this when I, when I ran this, we see there's certain number of how these JPEGs are numbered. So, and you can see here after that TBFC, we see some words at the very end of this. So I wonder if what she's trying to send us is by order of the JPEG. So if we go by 10, it says find. 16 is me. 25 is in. 46 is hop sec. And then 52 is island. Find me in Hopsec Island? Guys, I think we found it. Let's see if this is the secret message that McSkitty was trying to get to her blue team so we can help her and the team save Sockmas. Would you look at that? It looks like we found it. So everyone, thanks so much for joining me on day 13. And as always, I'll catch you on the next video.